But anyhow, so, um, you know, I knew that there was a possibility that cancer would, would uh, you know, might be in the future for me because it has been so much for other firefighters. But like I said, I felt healthy, I felt fine. It wasn't until I uh, came back from a fire and I had numbness in my hand, which ended up being the first symptom of the tumor growing on the, um, the left parietal area mm -hmm. of the brain. The left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. So that's why it's uh, the tumor is on the left side and my right side is the one that's been weak. And through that weakness in the hand and inability to feel things is what uh, were my first symptoms. And then once I went through several doctors, they, uh, they finally, one neurosurgeon said, uh, I'm going to have an MRI of your brain, which I thought it was very silly. I said, it's my hand that is hurting. It's not my brain. Mm -hmm. And two days later, I got the phone and they said, you need to take this. That's the most serious thing in your life. You know, you have a large brain tumor. Wow. So they did a biopsy and then uh, came back and said, uh, I'm sending you to UCLA because they're doing the best with malignant brain tumors, especially the type that you have. Mm-hmm. So that was in 2003, we're in 2010, Ten. Yeah. Isn't incredible. It's, it is incredible. And you're married, you have two children. Yeah, wife, Chris, we've been together for I think 25 years. Uh, two girls, uh, Noelle's 20, Jessica's 17. They're wow. totally beautiful and healthy and uh, I'm glad that they're good. Yeah. I'm glad that they're, they're, they're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. They're going to be fine. Wow. So, so seven years is a long time. It really is. Yeah, it is. A lot of great things have happened in the meantime. And there's been a lot of advances in regards to uh, brain tumor treatment as mm -hmm. well. So, and I've received a lot of them. Um, they kind of like me up there. Because <laughs> uh, so far things have been going okay. Yes. Unfortunately, the last couple of years, um, I've had some, some ups and downs. A couple of hospital stents again because of uh, new growths. But I had a long period without growth, and remember they told me one to two years in the beginning. And it's the new tumors that will develop, and wherever they develop in your brain, if that whatever area of the brain that uh, handled, you know, your functions, that's mm -hmm. what, uh, like for example, on my right hand, I lost sensation, so I don't feel anything on the hand at all. And that was just the part of the brain which was originally affected by the tumor. Right. Well, now they've taken that out, and now I, uh, because of the aggressive removal, I pretty much have lost a lot of use of my entire right side. I oh. still function pretty good. I hide right. It, I heard hide it fairly well. Yeah, because say no one would know. Don't you don't know. have a face of cancer. You know, not that. I mean, Thank like God. you, you don't. I mean, I think it's women who have breast cancer. It's a lot of times you can't tell either for a man with prostate cancer you can't tell mm -hmm. um so because uh, like you exude you exude life to me <laughs> which is pretty awesome that's why i, I want I, I find you so inspiring you know and i think that this is something that i think would help people like i wanted to ask you like in those seven years have you i'm sure you've gotten have you ever been depressed um i would be lying if i said no so don't um, say no. <laughs> no, no I, just, um, I have, but I quickly realize how fortunate I am that I'm still on my, my you know, I could stand on my own two feet. I can walk. I don't need a cane. Right. Um, I've taken a lot of medication, and uh, the grace of God has just allowed me. I really think that I have a message mm -hmm. to share, and uh, so I have no problem talking about it. Um, yes. And dealing with it. And, and what I want to do is share and tell people, um, although they tell you, get your life affairs in order. I mean, it just seems like most of the medical professionals have no real spiritual uh, beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so then they don't follow that. So they're doing their job and they, they help me on this earth yes. as much we can do. But I know spiritually, I do believe in God and I have a strong faith. And I know that uh, and I've asked God to use me. Mm -hmm. Use me and in, in helping in any way, whether with, it's with my type of cancer or somebody that has a break, broken leg. Right. Or maybe if I could be used by him, um, I'm all for it. Yeah, I think that you told me, and I, it plays back in my head as you said, I feel sometimes like I'm on borrowed time because they had told you two years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In reality, don't you believe that we are all on borrowed time because we don't know if we have tomorrow. But a lot of us live like we have forever. Yeah, absolutely. You know, 
And so I, I think it's like an inspiration that I don't know that. Uh, yes, I believe it's borrowed time. But now what you do with that time, and I think that um, you've chosen to live. You know, I think it's a, a choice that you put behind all this to work hard at it. And I think I asked you, like, is it kind of a burden when people, like, even though you don't wear the cancer on you, but people know that, so that's basically, like, every, maybe all your conversations. I mean, even I'm here talking to you about it. And I, I think for myself, I think I want to talk about it one last time and then be done with it, and, but then... Let's talk about other things, but I think that, like, I'm just, I don't know, it's my opinion that it's in your life, though. It intertwines in and out. We could try to steer away from it, but it's what brought you to where you're at today, to your faith stronger, your family getting closer. You said your parent, you know, you're closer with your family. Mm -hmm. um, in some weird way, it's a blessing. Absolutely. No, I've seen it the same way, but it's, it does sound weird to think mm -hmm. that. I have cancer and we're looking at it as a blessing you know what there's so many people unfortunately out there that have terminal illnesses mm -hmm. and uh, I would hope that they would uh, look at the good side of things enjoy the moment that they have and uh, and live live uh, there's a term from a movie uh, you got to get busy living or get busy dying which one's gonna, what, what are you gonna do right and uh, so I chose to live and uh, I don't have a, a goal to uh, change all, you know, or I don't have anything like that in mind, but I just, well, if I could share anything, pe stuff's going to happen to people, mm -hmm. whether it be a broken leg or brain cancer. This stuff happens. We're humans. We only, we're only here for a certain amount of time. What we do with that is totally up to us. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just keep coming back to that, that phrase in the movie, you know, get busy living or get busy dying. Mm -hmm. It just makes so much sense to me that I've chose to, to get busy living. And if I have a message to share, I'm not really sure what it is, but I just tell my story. And hopefully somebody can get uh, maybe a little inspired right. by that. Uh, then I'll think that I've accomplished something. And real quick, I think what the message I got from you this time, this visit with you, is you said, don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> and it's a simple line, yeah. but it's so true. Yeah, it's very much a part of my life. Because there's no doubt that I would sweat the small stuff. And the small stuff, I would tell you, would be an example of like, the sun is going down already. And I know that trash day is tomorrow. <laughs> so I have to mow the lawn so that all the trash goes out. Really, I think about how, how silly was that? When my grass wants to grow and <laughs> it goes over the sidewalk a little bit, I'm okay with that. Right. You know, I'm okay with that. And uh, so that's an example of the small stuff that I think about. And uh, there's so much more to life than yeah. sweating the small stuff. And I just, unfortunately, I would hope that people would not wait for something to happen to their friends or something to happen to themselves to realize that. Right. I guess we'll end on that note. And I, I enjoy being a part of your life. Thank you, Roman. Thank you.